Okay, so we're going to read from Nectar of Instruction, text 10. Karmibhya parito hare priyataya vyakting yadyur jnaninas te bhyo jnana vimukta bhakti parama premaika nishtashtataha te bhyastha pasupala pankajadrishas Tabhyo pisaradhika Preshta tadvadiyang tadiya sarasi Tang nashrayet kakriti Translation In Shastras it is said that of all types of fruitive workers, he who is advanced in knowledge of the higher values of life is favored by the Supreme Lord, Hari. Out of many such people who are advanced in knowledge, jnanis, one who is practically liberated by virtue of his knowledge may take to devotional service. He is superior to the others. However, one who has actually attained prema, pure love of Krishna, is superior to him. The gopis are exalted above all the advanced devotees because they are always totally dependent upon Krishna, the transcendental cowherd boy. Among the gopis, Srimati Radharani is the most dear to Krishna. Harkunda, lake, is as profoundly dear to Lord Krishna as this most beloved of the gopis. Who then will not reside at Radha Kund and in a spiritual body surcharged with ecstatic devotional feelings, a prakrita bhav, render loving service to the divine couple Sri Sri Radha Govinda, who perform their Ashtakaliya Lila their eternal eightfold daily pastimes. Indeed, those who execute devotional service on the banks of Radha Kund are the most fortunate people in the universe. Wow, that's deep. Well, I think we already covered at quite some length and elaborately the distinctions of, of the different levels of devotional service. Huh? That in the beginning, a devotee has to execute devotional service according to regulative principles. Then, once they are cleared of all their nartas, they can execute spontaneous devotional service because their heart is clean. And this spontaneous devotional service culminates in Prema, or pure love of Godhead. Now, there are all different kinds of pure devotees in five different flavors. Uh, neutrality, servitorship, friendship, parenthood, and conjugal love. And these are in the order of more and more pleasing to Krishna. Neutrality is not very much pleasing to Krishna. But conjugal love is the most pleasing type of service to Krishna. So out of all the pure devotees who are in the stage of prema, which means all the inhabitants of the spiritual world, those who are in conjugal love are the most pleasing to Krishna. And of all the devotees who are uh, in this mood of conjugal love, the gopis are the best because the gopis, they give up everything for their... Uh, service to Krishna, even religious principles, right? they give up everything. So the gopis of all the conjugal lovers of Krishna are the best. And of all the, of the gopis, the best is Srimati Radharani. Srimati Radharani is the personification of Krishna's Hladini Shakti. Right? 
when we say that Krishna is Sat Chit Ananda. Sat represents his existence potency. Chit represents his knowledge potency or consciousness. And Ananda represents his pleasure potency. And so the name of this Ananda, the pleasure potency, is Hladini. Hladini means pleasing. Hlad. Hladini Shakti. So the Hladini Shakti personified is <clears throat> Srimati Radharani. And she is like Krishna. She even resembles Krishna in many ways, except she's female. And instead of being the supreme personality of Godhead, she is the supreme power of the personality of Godhead. So those who worship Srimati Radharani, uh, they uh, form a group called a yuta. And the yuta of Srimati, Rad Srimati Radharani is known as the left-wing gopis. Uh, so the left-wing gopis, they all congregate at a certain place in Vrindavan. And this place is Radha Kund. Radha Kund is therefore the site of many, many confidential pastimes of conjugal love between Radha and Krishna. And involving all of the most intimate devotees of the Lord. Uh, so this place is most sacred. And in Gokula, in Krishna's pastimes in this material world, Radha Kund is uh, at the foot of Govardhan Hill in Vrindavan. And you can go there, you can visit. There are many temples. Actually, every house there is a temple. Every, every place you go, there is it's an ashram. And there are many, many sannyasis and babajis and many devotees of all kinds, and they're all very much engaged in the worship of Radha Kun, and especially Radharani. Wherever you go in Vrindavan, when people see each other on the road, they don't say hi or good morning. They say, Jai Radhe. So you hear this everywhere you go in Vrindavan. Jai Radhe, Jai Radhe. It's really nice. Vrindavan is really Radha's place. Uh, even though Krishna, Krishna might live there, <laughs> but he lives under the control of Radharani. Uh, Radharani is so influential with Krishna because she is Krishna's pleasure potency. Uh, so she is uh, known as the uh, Vrindavaneshwari, the controller, the queen of Vrindavan. Uh, so all the devotees of Radharani, they're all uh, in this similar mood uh, that... Oh, Krishna, well, Krishna is very nice. And, uh, you know, we all worship Krishna. But Radha, oh, Radha is super excellent. This is the mood. And that uh, if Krishna misbehaves, then we can chastise him. <laughs> so he has to be respectful and kind to Radha. He can't do anything that's displeasing to Radha, or he's in trouble. <laughs> you see, these are the sweet pastimes between Krishna and his intimate devotees. Uh, just like Mother Yashoda uh, can chastise Krishna. Uh, the, the Damodar pastime, where she ties Krishna to the grinding mortar, is a good example. And uh, if Krishna misbehaves, Mother Yashoda can spank him. See? And he's really afraid of Mother Yashoda. You know, so this is this is mood. Uh, it's called mugdha. Mugdha means that Krishna, when he's ab around his intimate devotees, he forgets that he's God. He forgets that he's the supreme controller. And he really feels like, oh, Mother Yashoda is is my mother, and she's going to discipline me if I'm bad. Similarly, 
when he's with Radha, he really feels like, oh, Radha is just is 10 million times more blissful than I am. And he becomes curious. He wants to know, how is it? How is it possible that Radharani can be so blissful and so ecstatic? Uh, she has this certain kind of ecstasy called Mahabhava. Mahabhava is visible only in Srimati Radharani and her direct uh, associates or direct expansions. Uh, Twelve principal gopis uh, or her direct expansions. So this Mahabhava mood is so ecstatic and so wonderful that Krishna himself wonders, how is it possible? I want to experience this. <laughs> 